What's up, heathens? I'm glad that you could join me today. Uh, we're going to be doing an interview with Hymnalysis. Uh, he will be linked down below if you want to go down to the description, go and subscribe to him. Uh, subscribing to him will really help this channel out and help everybody out in the secular community because we need to promote the new upcoming people that are in the community creating content. I hope you enjoy the interview, and I will see you guys afterwards. Welcome, all you lovely heathens out there. Uh, tonight we have an interview with him analysis. Uh, he has a uh, YouTube channel here, um, uh, him analysis. Um, I, I don't know if you want to tell people your name at all or anything, but would you like to tell people about your uh, channel and what you do there? Yeah, uh, I've got a kind of a unique thing going. Uh, I decided to go after Christian music instead of the basic theology or the Bible itself because that's been done and of course i still bring that up as you know a tie into the material but the music of christianity is the most powerful connection people have it's like you'll see former christians still playing gospel music because they enjoy it they feel a connection to it and it's almost uh, hypnotizing when you're in church now i never experienced that feeling because i always felt like an outsider but um i decided to go after something that would be visceral to uh, current Christians. So uh, on your channel there, you uh, you analyze the, the uh, Christian hymns or whatnot. So you, you basically just pick them apart uh, and, instead of, I guess, you know, uh, dumb Christians on the internet. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, of course, I do some of that too. I've got a, a video series called Terrible Facebook Posts where uh, – I go through and pick those things that uh, you always want to talk to your relatives about, like the inspirational God's got your back type shit, and you like want to say something, but you can't, so I, I say something. The way that I got the idea for my channel is I was picking an item at work, which was the 100 Greatest Hymns Collection. I forget who it was by, who compiled it, and uh, it had some of the most notable things like Amazing Grace, Victory in Jesus, pretty much you would recognize any of them if you've ever been to, been to church. And I got to thinking to myself, man, I should put him, hymnal, actually, it was hymnal plus analysis, not the word him, which would, you know, led me to make the connection, but it works better this way. But I decided that's how I was going to do things, and that's how I was going to make my impact on the atheist community, because I had picked kind of a niche, and that's really how it was. And now, two, two or three years prior, I had a blog, and it's still up. Uh, where I was detailing my deconversion story, and I actually took let's I'll fly away and like deconstructed it just out of boredom, and I'd completely forgotten about it until I was about two videos into making my channel. I was like, oh, I did that two years ago, so that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. You'll have to uh, send me the link so I can uh, include you know that uh, whenever I post it up but um, uh, you know speaking of your uh, deconversion uh, that's actually what we're here to, to talk about today and uh, you said that you were a former Christian I'm wondering what exactly you know what type of Christian were you like when you started out like when you were a little kid I was initially non-religious or in a non-religious household because my mom didn't bother to go to church. But my grandmother took me, and she's the matriarch of the family in the truest sense. Like, there's not a, a man at the head of our family. It's her. And uh, she is an amazing woman. And she's very religious, of course, because she's old-fashioned. But And she raised me the best way she knew how. And part of that was going to church. And we went to a Southern Baptist, like the actual Southern Baptist, like beholden to the SBC and everything. And, of course, I was a little kid, so all I saw of it was children's church, which was the songs like Jesus Loves the Little Children. And um, I, Anyways, she, got, uh, she took me there after she found out that my mom let me be babysit by another family who took me to church for the very first time. And, of course, since I was like five or six years old, I got saved that day. So my grandmother got super excited, and she's like, I'm going to get you baptized at my church. And so through some years of foster care after that, which was a complicated situation, I still remained a Christian, like, very heavily until I was 21. And then one day I kind of realized that 
the arguments that I had for God weren't really holding up because two years prior to two years prior to that, I was in Job Corps, and a buddy of mine told me he didn't believe in God, and I spent like two hours lecturing him about the argument from beauty, which I didn't know what it was. It was just all I could think of. And then I kind of let that go and forgot about it and just kind of resided in my head for a while. Mm-hmm. So back to when I was 21, uh, one of my friends wrote a paper for a college class about evolution. And his job was to disprove it or prove it, one of the two. And he told me, he said, I got about halfway through writing it and realized that I was completely wrong about everything. And now I don't believe in creation anymore. And I was like, that makes no sense. That's stupid. And then I went home and read the atheism subreddit. And I literally forced myself to read it. And like, it it was the weirdest thing ever because I started wanting to become an atheist just because it started to make sense, but I couldn't let go of the idea of hell. But about a week into that, I declared myself an agnostic. A week later, I declared myself an atheist. And then I was in that awkward stage of promoting the shit out of it because I was furious, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. It went a thousand different directions. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm kind of curious, like uh, in that in that time between, like um, you know, when you were a Christian, uh, I, I'm I'm curious, like what kind of role did religion play in your life? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, this will be several stages. Is that okay? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. When I first converted, it was just every time I went to see my grandmother on a Sunday, we went to church. When I first got saved, it was just like, oh, I went with that family, and now I have a new worldview, and I was a little kid, so I just accepted it. And that's how it was for a while. I got really into Sunday school, and uh, I was I was one of those kids that knew all the Bible verses, you know? And the youth minister, or children's church pastor more accurately, had a contest going on called the Eternity 500, which was... Uh, it was based on this Bible verse. It's like, run patiently the race set before you. I think it's in Hebrews. And I memorized everything, and I won it, and I got a trophy like this tall, and I kept it for like years and years. And that's who I was. I was like super Christian boy. And as uh, the trauma of my childhood caught up with me uh, into the fourth and fifth grade, I started acting out. I guess that's what they portrayed it as. The memories are fuzzy. But my grandmother got to the point where she could no longer handle me over time. And so she kind of farmed me out to a fake foster home, which was run by a Christian service. Uh, If I say the name, I'll pretty much dox myself. But it wasn't actual state custody. It was just, hey, come live with me in a therapeutic setting. And this guy was Church of Christ. And we're not talking like autonomous, but uh, I think it was like one of the mainline ones with the central governing body. And Church of Christ doesn't have any music in their service. So that was a first for me. And there are two things I remember distinctly about that. Uh, One time I asked him, because I'd never been to the building where the church was before. He said, I asked him, where is the sanctuary? And he said, we're all sanctuaries. Our heart is the sanctuary for God. And I was like, I knew exactly what the fuck he was talking about because I wasn't stupid. I was like, I know what you mean by that, and I appreciate it, but where is it? And he said, no, I'm telling you, it's there. And I just, I, I think that was the first time I ever, like, without using the words fuck off, said that to an authority figure because he was, I felt like he was messing with me. But the other thing was uh, something he said, if you make fun of God, like any sort of parody whatsoever, that you have committed an unforgivable sin. And he didn't say deny the Holy Spirit, which is actual blasphemy. He said that blasphemy was making fun of God. And a couple of years later, when I was in seventh grade, um, start of seventh grade, I went to live with a part of my actual family in Mississippi. And super country, fundamentalist Baptist church, you know, side of the dirt road. Um, one man preaches and couple people may take turns speaking and like everybody knows everybody they literally live in the same area and like sell crops to each other i don't know but wonderful part of my family by the way i uh that man's name was howard and he died a few years ago i didn't get to see him but he he, they were all good people you know what i mean they meant well and i got bored in church one day and i started making fun of the song called everybody will be happy over there 
Um, and for some reason, the word frappy popped into my mind. I don't know where the fuck that came from. I don't even know if it's a word. But I was in seventh grade, so it made sense to me. So I injected that word into it. I kept singing it over and over in my head. And then I something clicked, and I remembered, I can't be saved now. So from that point onwards, I was still a Christian. But I was absolutely fucking convinced that I was going to hell regardless. So later on, like as I went into the eighth grade, I just quit going to church because I wasn't ever taken there, and it became an afterthought to me. And that's how church was forever. And then I get to like, and I, I'm probably leaving some steps out here, but these are the highlights. I get to like the 11th grade, and I start going back to the uh, Baptist church, which was the one that my grandmother took me to. Uh, formerly Southern Baptist had just kind of upgraded to Baptist, you know, reduced the severity of fundamentalism a little bit because they got really big and like almost non-denominational. And, uh, started going there being part of the youth group and everything and it was still an afterthought to me in fact i had to be dragged to church because and get this i hated church because of the music like i loved the preaching i fucking hated the music because this church in particular didn't use one of these they didn't use like old standbys like rock of ages and uh, my redeemer lives and amazing grace and shit like that that you if you heard you you would know they started using things like Open the Eyes of My Heart and uh, There is a Fountain Who is a King. That's a real song. And that like that was the first time I ever got pissed off at a Christian song. So I, st I started trying to avoid church. And sh like she wouldn't make me go uh, as I got older. But uh, kind of losing my train of thought here. But anyways, I, I completely stopped going to church. Uh, after high school, only when I was made to, like when my grandmother would take me back in and let me live at her house, she's like, okay, now you got to go to church, and if you want to stay here, and I'm like, okay. Did that one time, and I went to this church that was down the road from me, met up with the pastor, and he like took me around, helped me get my first job back from Job Corps, helped me get my first car, and like introduced me to some people. He was a really cool guy. And I was going to try to become a deacon of the church, and they just roundly fucking rejected me. So I stopped going to church. And uh, it kind of devolved from there, because that was about two years before I became an atheist. Oh, also, back to the 10th grade, I was actually in a wilderness camp called Eckerd Youth Alternatives. And they had like 20, 40-something odd camps across the eastern seaboard, and all but one of them are closed now. And they were the first ecumenical church uh, type thing I ever went to because they had chapel every Sunday and it was just these sitting logs that everybody would go to and we would have a very generic church service and Christ was never mentioned and I remember asking why is this not Christian and because I would, had literally never been exposed to any other religion period like when 9-11 happened I didn't know what Islam was but we were there under specific or non-specific religion and uh like I said, that was that was it. That was my first time ever being told that there was any such thing as a non-Christian in the world. I literally thought for a long fucking time that there were two kinds of people in the world. People who had who go to church and people who don't. And that everybody's default Christian. It's just like somebody, some people fell away and some people are still going. But yeah, that <laughs> long rambling thing is all about my past as a zealot. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was very interesting to hear. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, being a, a Catholic boy. Uh, you know, I went to Catholic private school until fourth grade. And then after that, I went to public school and, you know, I bounced around uh, non-denominational and Baptist stuff. Um, so, you know, religion really wasn't all that big part of my life. So it's always really interesting to hear other people's perspectives on the issue. Um, I, I'm wondering, can, like, after you, you know, came out of religion and, and became an atheist, um, like, do you see yourself as a different person, like, afterwards, but compared to when you were a Christian? I don't believe atheism changed me so much as just pushed me in the right direction, because when I was a Christian, it wasn't a matter of faith to me. Nothing in my life has ever been a matter of faith. It was knowledge. Uh, Christ was as real to me as Je Thomas Jefferson or any historical figure. 
Sunday school to me was an extension of regular school that just happened to be in a different building. And no one, I'd never met anyone who questioned God up until I was 19, of course. It, it just, what well, you just don't do it. So basically I was already, and to add to that, I was already a skeptic when I was a Christian because I rejected astrology, paganism, and just about anything that make no, don't make no damn sense. Um, and I knew the reasons they were stupid, and they were always Christian reasons. But now I know the actual reasons, if you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. And uh, so basically all I did to leave Christianity was apply that same scrutiny to my own religion. And it took like no time at all. And for most people, it's a traumatic experience. And, I mean, there was a little pain involved, like the realization that hell isn't there. That that was the worst part. Because I was like, no, I'm going to hell. There's no fucking way I'm getting out of that. And I had to, like, just keep telling myself, there's no proof for this. There is just nothing there. You have to get, give it up. And sometimes I still feel guilty. Like, I feel like I'm being disingenuous by being an atheist because I wanted to become one. I don't think anyone I've ever met sought that out. They all try to fight it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't think it fundamentally changed me, but it did definitely push me to more critically examine other things that I just held as, you know, virtuous, like the military, for instance. I always thought they were just 100% good all the time, and now I'm a liberal and see why the Iraq War was stupid, for example. Right. Well, I'm kind of curious. You say that that uh, well, I mean, like with without that threat of hell now, I mean, do you not? Do you feel like um, I, I don't know? Do, did did you feel any kind of like weight being lifted off of you? The fact that you're not going to be going to hell, or uh, do do you feel more guilt, like, or do you, or anything like that? To be honest, none of the none of that comes to mind now. Um, this this is going to be a more depressing answer than you thought. It's uh, I'm nihilistic now. Um, all I think about all the time is how temporary everything is, and it bothers the shit out of me. Because used to there was a point to all this shit, and now there's just like, okay, all I do at work is think, okay, I'm here to earn money, then I'm going to put it in my bank account, and when I die, it's gone. I play a video game. Okay, when I uh, when I stop playing this video game, and my hard drive eventually fries itself because they all do it's gone everything's going to leave us we're all going to die and the sun's going to eat the earth and entropy is going to happen and that's all i fucking think about all the time how everything has a a finite property to it it bothers the shit out of me it's almost like i wish i could be a christian again just to have that happy blissful outlook which wasn't really blissful if you look at it from our perspective but when you're in it it is Right. It's a, it's a nice delusion to have. Kind of like being in the Matrix. Oh, definitely. It's the best analogy ever. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm kind of curious, um, you know, is, is there anything that you could tell, um, like, a young atheist or, or um, somebody that may be questioning religion? Like, is, is, if there's one piece of advice you could give that kind of person, what would that be? You hit a nerve uh, with that one, and that's a good thing, because that's the mission of my channel, is to reach people who are trapped in religious situations, or anybody who comes across my videos. And uh, it's technically against YouTube rules to deceptively title videos, but I I started out with the intention of titling all my videos something innocent, so that somebody would accidentally come across my thing while looking for worship music, but I decided I wouldn't like a terminated channel. But what I'm getting at is... I want to be something that triggers a young person to go, wait a minute, this is kind of didn't make any sense. So I basically would like to prevent another me from happening because religion fucked my life up pretty good. It it fucked up the way I perceived everything and I'm still dealing with it now because of the negativity of nihilism. And I feel like that if I hadn't been a Christian and I'd just been an atheist, I'd be more at peace with it. But I just want to get to somebody earlier than I was gotten to and tell them that it's okay to have these thoughts. It's okay to be like, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, or why were all of Jesus' buddies given European white guy names? Jesus definitely wasn't white. 
all these little inane questions that we I even heard them in high school and just completely disregarded them. But then when you start asking those questions, how can free will and omniscience exist at the same time? They they can't. It's okay to think those things. It's okay to leave God behind. I just want I just want people in that situation to know that they're not alone and that they're not defective for thinking those things, nor are they superior to anyone else. It's just becoming aware of facts. But I just I, I want them to be okay with themselves and okay with the fact that the universe is the way it is. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that that's a, a very uh, good thing to have for your channel, like a good direction to have. Uh, and like you said before, like a, a lot of people are very connected with these hymns. And I think that that's a very good way to reach people. Um, I know me personally, uh, when I was pretty deep with uh, the uh, youth group, uh, like that was one of the things that I really connected with uh, when I would go to like the, the Wednesday night uh, youth uh, services or whatnot was the, the singing. And I mean, you know, that that's that's pretty much in general, like people in general really connect with singing. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> you go to any concert and people, you know, they'll get out their lighters and they'll start crying and whatnot over any kind of song. <laughs> wanted to add to what you said. Um, people do have that type of response to music. And th there was one point where I was flirting with the idea of moving in with a friend of mine and her dad. And it wasn't a romantic thing. We were basically brothers and sisters. Um, it, that's how we acted towards one another and still do to this day. She's one of my very best friends, but her dad is a fundamentalist pastor and not necessarily like the oppressive, don't divorce your spouse, you know, gays are bad fundamentalists, but just very religious, d deeply devout, devoted to God. Absolutely wonderful man. I have literally nothing bad to say about him except this. He, uh, he said, if you move in here, you can't listen to rock music anymore. And he gave me the weirdest reason. He said, any time that you listen to music, you're worshiping something. Because music is the tool of the devil. So any music that plays in this house needs to be music that's directed towards God. And I felt like he was a little biased because he was a DJ on a contemporary Christian radio station. So he had he was in the know about all that and very you know, very much preferred it. But yeah, that that's definitely true that music has that type of connection with people and that's why i'm going after it no yeah thank you guys for joining us for this interview today i hope you enjoyed it if you did indeed like uh hymnalysis there go down below and subscribe to him uh via the link also, don't forget to consider donating to our CrowdRise campaign for Engineers Without Borders. They really do a lot of work around the world to help out developing countries and help out uh, our community in general. And as always, don't forget to stand up and use your voice. See y'all later.